Now, Steve, uh, NRA Secretary Jim Land, uh, who is one of the architects of the modern Marine Corps mm -hmm, sniper mm -hmm. program, he was Carlos Hathcock's commanding officer in Vietnam. After he read Sudden Impact, he told me, he picked it up, he didn't necessarily want to read it, mm -hmm. but he wanted to have an I got ya. Mm -hmm. And he read the book and he told me he didn't get anything wrong. Yeah, well that's, I, he's told me that too and it makes me very proud. One of the early motivations was that, of course, there's also a lot of junk in popular culture about guns. You know, we've all seen movies where the six shooter fires 75 times and the guy, you know, kills a sniper from 200 yards with a hip shot from a Colt detective special and that sort of thing. One of the things from the very beginning was I wanted to portray the guns accurately. I wanted to understand what they did and what they didn't do. I wanted to uh, talk about uh, how they were used, what the dynamics of firearms encounters were as opposed to what the Hollywood uh, vision of them was. And I, I, I figured, uh, Hemingway once said something like, the way you start every morning is you try and think of one true thing. Well, I didn't know much about anything except guns, so I thought, if I could get one true thing about a gun in, maybe that would that would take me somewhere interesting. And so all the books sort of turn on the fulcrum of a particular gun being used or not being used. And I've always made gone to great pains, maybe too great a pain, to make sure that I got the details right. And I'm proud. I'm quite proud. Uh, that I seemed, I've gotten some things wrong, uh, but I've, as, I, I haven't made too many uh, terrible mistakes. I did once get the caliber of the PPSH submachine gun wrong in a piece in the Washington Post, and I almost committed suicide. No, I didn't, but I, it was, I, I thought for some reason, I just assumed it was 9 millimeter, and it's not, so I apologize for that <laughs> once again <laughs> yeah that little that little bottleneck poker mm -hmm. cartridge that's mm -hmm. just uh don't see the who knew <laughs> the russians you can't trust them because they built a nine millimeter submachine gun like everybody else in 1941 anyway <laughs> uh, you, you alluded to it just now but um you actually use firearms as uh, uh, plot devices yeah. in the guns and you, you, uh, you use the guns uh, as, as a plot device and, and almost, they almost take on uh, uh, the, the role of character sometimes in your books. Yes, I do and that's why the books almost always begin with guns and I try and, how can I say this, I try and imbue the characters with the virtues of the gun. Um, uh, you know, I mean as my great character, Bob Lee Swagger, he is sort of a human M40A1 sniper rifle. You know, he's accurate, he doesn't miss his, he's uh, rugged, he doesn't go out of zero, he understands what to do, you know, he understands what to do, he holds together in uh, um, tense and, uh, you know, extreme moments, um, and he's for the simplicity of his appearance, he's enormously sophisticated underneath. So in that sense, he and the rifle, there's a kind of a commonality of, of, of personality there. Um, I, I also, you know, in other ways, you can use uh, guns to characterize, you know, bad guys. I'm, you know, in, in uh, this book that I've just published, I Sniper, the bad guy has a uh, has a, a, a very latest generation uh, computer driven ballistics calculator scope, and Bob just has a mill dot scope. So there's something of the virtue of God of Bob and the uh, willingness of the bad guy to quote cheat. Now, you know, I don't think. I would like to see all our soldiers in the field with computer-driven ballistic calculator scopes, but in the framework of the book, it's very clear that 
one scope is good and honorable and the other scope is is a reflection of the of the bad guys willingness uh, and, and sort of ruthlessness in using technology to compensate for lack of talent, which is a bad mistake when you're dealing with Bob Lee Swagger, <laughs> as he finds out.